What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 51, returning today on the back of the special thank you episode number 50 where our treble dreams died, yep, humiliation at Wembley, uh, Spurs you see went on to win the FA Cup beating Newcastle United but they thrashed us 4-0 in the final, totally out of left field but fair play man, what a performance that was from them, uh, but we did win the Premier League, uh, free peak, yep, first time in Doc's history we've done it, free peak in the Premier League with the same team, four clear in Newcastle to win, our third league title in a was today we are returning with the big one the Champions League final Liverpool versus Real Madrid third meeting and I think I think 11 years or maybe 12 but even so Real Madrid in the final once again as we go for a league and European double on our first European honour of this save so yeah getting straight to it in today's episode here I uh, just want to briefly show you the slide oh Planet Wembley show you the sliders uh, very briefly of course uh, of course we're up to half minute to four minutes as well but uh, yeah they're, they're all in default on 50 and the injury is 80 and 54 I have to say this kind of just shows you the randomness of the injuries last season we were injury plagued yet the frequency and severity was slightly lower <laughs> yet this year we only really had two noteworthy injuries and one of course is Eze who is out for this Champions League final but yeah of course they're all on 50 I have to say I think yeah I've done a really good job of the difficulty this year honestly for someone who's been playing um, and, and doing YouTube videos since FIFA 11 I think the difficulty this year has been really spot on on ultimate for 50 I've really enjoyed the challenge so yeah I'm gonna make one change to the lineup and that is Diaz coming in for Elliot on that right hand side and I'm, oh man, Kwanzaa normally always comes up good for me. Whenever I start him, especially in the big games. He's the weaker defender, but, as I always say, it's not all about rating. Big call, bring Kwanzaa in as well. I think he deserves it. Uh, other than that, I'm okay with the lineup, and yep, don't need to make changes to the bench. Like I said, only Ize is down with the injury right now. Yep, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that lineup. Let's get straight into it. Then Champions League final, Real Madrid at Wembley. And I also want to start today's episode by saying, guys, thank thank you so much for all the support on the save. I, I know I said this in a special thank you episode number 50. Um, but the support has been incredible, man. I have some great feedback from you guys as well. Some of you guys have been reaching out to me on the socials as well, you know, Twitter or X or whatever it's called now, Instagram, Snapchat, and giving you, uh, giving me your uh, your praise for it. Thank you so much, man. It's been brilliant, and I really, really appreciate it. I've, I've loved this save. It's been so enjoyable. And, um, yeah, first time getting to a European final now. Buzzing to finally be here after six years. Here's Real Madrid's line, and then they're playing a 4 one 2 one 2 diamond narrow called twice between the sticks. And about for his Dedic, Militao, Hinkapi, who grows brilliantly in this year's FC, and Nuno Mendes, now 87 overall. Ugarte is their anchor man, with a former Liverpool man, Dominic, through the middle alongside James Madison, with Jude Bellingham still there, 92 overall, supporting Rasmus and Vinicius. It is an unbelievable team as we take them on at Wembley. First only game today, Real Real Madrid, Champions League final. Come on, Liverpool. Yeah, I think you can probably tell by my voice. Um, not not feeling overly confident for the game. Uh, if, you, if you missed episode number 50, by the way, uh, Real Madrid, they've won the league title. They've won La Liga. They've, uh, they've, they've won it quite comfortably, too, from what it appears. So... Both teams going for a league and European double. We don't know how Real Madrid would have gotten in the cup. All play advantage, please, ref. We don't know how Real... Hang on. Hold on. Oh, get close straight at quarter. We don't know how they would have gone on in the Copa del Rey because you can't check the cup competitions of the other uh, leagues around the world. But wouldn't be surprised if they're going for the treble. But at least, just like us, they'll be going for a league and European double. Meeting the blockbuster sides here. Great start from Liverpool, but still goalless inside the first six minutes. Good to see that, though. Already an early booking for Dominic. Yeah, I'd say we're slight underdogs for this one here. We've had two disappointing defeats towards the end of the season. Uh, obviously against Aston Villa and, and Spurs in that FA Cup semi as well. Real Madrid side, like I said, unreal. And ours has become amazing as well. But I'd say this is slightly better. Slightly better. But this one here is a water Colwell out there. Probably shouldn't have done so. That's alright, because Boobs is there. Man, oh man. Every single... Hold on. Save I do. I see you, Jack. I see you, Diaz. Two on one. We've got to finish it. Oh no, what am I... Okay, 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 it's fine, it's fine, fine, fine. Why am I, why am I cutting back onto a weaker left foot? They just, just shoot across the body, man. It's okay, good start though, good start. But every save, I was going to say, every save I do, man, there's one player in my starting 11 who's always just consistently brilliant and never gets the praise. Boobacar Camera, absolutely love him. Brilliant start, this from Liverpool though. Still 0-0 for now, but keep this up. 
And I think that opening goal's coming, but... Yeah, I think Liverpool probably thought that a couple of years ago when they faced Real during the Champions League final. Only for Courtois to put on a world-class display. And maybe, just maybe, we'll see it once again. Vinny. Rasmus. No, no, no. Cole's there. And that's going to... That's... Was, was he... Who? Booking for... When? Who? Why? What? Where? Where? Where's the booking? Where's the... Oh, okay. I missed that. <laughs> Definite booking. <sighs> Might as well stay with me for this highlight here, because this is a nervy period. Kirk is off the line. And the head of my head could be drops wide. What a start at Wembley. There's Liverpool escape. That's dangerous, that boost going into the book early. Against this Real Madrid team, already skating on thin ice. Only played half an hour, that is not a good sign. And uh, what was, oh, sugar. Kwanzaa. Oh, lovely ball too. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Could he go left? Drag him away, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at the space he's given me now for Diaz. Hold. Ben, I'll see you on the overlap. Clark's on side. Curtis Jones! Come on! The boy from Dog Stev gives Liverpool the lead at Wembley. Courtois beaten! And his first blood, Liverpool, in the Champions League final. <sighs> Come on! Just took my time. Easy, easy, easy. Wait for that opening, and there it is. Fires past Courtois. CJ gives us the lead right before the break. And that is going to do it. Half time. Liverpool lead. Only by one, though. And we saw the warning signs. About half an hour in. Game's far from finished and far. We've been a better team, but it's far from in our control here. What I will say is that once again, I'll be very impressed with Cole Willen, Kwanzaa. As a CB draw, I prefer, I prefer Kwanzaa to Kanate. I really do. And this is, this is when I say it all the time about how, you know, the overall rating, of course, is important. Of course, it's a good indicator as to who, how good that player is theoretically going to be. But it's not the most important thing. I, I, I will take Kwanzaa over Kanate. Ooh. Oh, Courtois. I seem to lose flight of the ball there. The Dim managed to push it behind for a corner. I'll I take Kwanzaa over Ganate, man. I love this guy. As Trent's going to whip in this corner. Decent delivery. Courtois does enough. And it's headed clear by Ugarte. I've got to say, as things stand here, if we keep our foot on the gas pedal, I think we're going to find a second goal. Jack Clark. Oh, Courtois. Once again. Another masterclass against Liverpool in a Champions League final. Only on this occasion, he has been beaten at least once. Oh, what a goal that would have been. But Real are penned right now. Real are absolutely penned. This is one of those moments where you just don't want to let your opponent out of the corner, off the ropes. Because right now, they are struggling to get out. Trent blocked. It'll draw to Kirk as you keep the ball, keep the ball, keep the ball, keep the ball. There we go, there we go, there we go. There we go. I have to say, other than the one heart and mouth moment where Kirk is clear off the line, I think I've done a pretty decent job in this game here. Look at that in the top left. Real can't get the ball right now. Oh, I see you, Ben! McKenzie! Can you believe it? The bomb of the Academy Grand, taken to Liverpool by his manager, who believed in him as a long lad from Glasgow. Took him to Dorset, took him to Liverpool, took him to the Champions League final. And just his third goal in professional football comes in the Champions League final. Ben McKenzie has possibly put the dagger into the Real Madrid hearts.
What a moment for the wand again. Well, I've taken off Boobs just because he's still on that booking. I mean, obviously he's still. How, how can he not? How can he lose a booking as Allison does well? Dives on it and just takes his time. How can he lose? Still on the booking. Is he? Is he really? I thought he lost it. Um, <laughs> sometimes I amaze myself with my stupidity. But <laughs> it's all good. Because Liverpool are going to win what will be their seventh Champions League in history. And their first since 2019 against Spurs. Cody Gakpo to wrap it up. No Courtois does brilliantly. And in my first European final. I mean, there's two minutes to go. Listen, you can't ever rule out Real Madrid, But I think we're going to be all right. He says with his heart in his mouth. Oh, just take him down. Just take, this is Jude Bellingham, man. Just take him down. Cole goes into the book. That's, a, that's what you call a strategic foul, that. Just take him down. Don't let him get ahead of steam, man. As, well, Real really needs to score for this freaking. He's going to run over that. There we go. And Rasmus still offload it. There we go. Called that. Nah, you're too far out, Jude. That is going to do it. Come on. I felt we were underdogs. But I felt we were underdogs against Man City. And we lost the first leg without Cody Gakpo. And then we overcame the deficit in the second leg. And heading into the final against Real Madrid after they knocked us out last year in the quarterfinals. What a response from Liverpool. A 2-0 win at Wembley. And I have to say as well, full value. Yes, Real had that chance in the first half where Kirk has needed to be alert to clear off the line. But other than that, I thought we were the better team and deserved it as well. Absolutely buzzing. It's not a treble. It's not a treble. But it's a league and European double. And Liverpool are Champions League winners again. When you talk about saving the best till the last, this game is definitely a case of that being true. I have to say, in one of the biggest games, well, no, 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 the biggest game of the entire, so my first European final as manager, our first Champions League final to save. I mean, what a performance. Literally, despite, again, the Kirkes clearance off the line, and yes, Alisson made a couple of reasonably comfortable saves. I felt, I felt we were full value for that. I felt we were full value for that. More shots, more XG or high XG, more possession, more passes. Just in general, just the better team on the night and deserved to come through with a win. How different it could have been had Kirk has not headed that corner off the line. How different things could have been and probably would have been there at Wembley. So 2-0 winners, absolutely buzzing, a league and European double. And man, you know, I really wanted to treble. You know, I really, really, really wanted to treble. Because I, I don't think I've actually won one yet in, in FC. I don't think I have. I know I've won a couple of league and European doubles, but not an actual treble. But in the end, I'm not going to say no to a free peat in the league, my first time ever, and the Champions League as well. And for the man of the match, I mean, it's got to be, right? It's got to be. Ben McKenzie. Surely, Kirk, Kirk is wins it in terms of ratings. To be fair, because of the head of clearance off the line, he probably does deserve to be at least getting a special mention. But... I, I'd say McKenzie. I, I, I'd, I'd say I'd say McKenzie personally, just just for the goal alone, and also ensuring he was part of the back line that kept the clean sheet as well. But really, I thought everyone was sublime that game. And funny enough, Cody, my star player, had a bit of a quiet one really. But in the end, we got the job done courtesy of a rear guard defensive display. And Ben, the, can you believe it? I mean, seriously, Ben McKenzie. When have you ever seen a fullback for me become the main wonder kid out of the academy? When was the last time that happened? Ollie Shaw in the Sheffield United career mode back in FIFA 20? I mean, it just doesn't happen. But Ben McKenzie, what a way to end the season with only his third goal in professional football. Second of the season, funny enough, both coming in the Champions League. But the dagger to ensure we would win that Champions League. And that, to me, is a great way to end the save. A great way to end the save as well, man. I, I, had, had we lost this final, obviously, I, I would have played another season. Going for that trip would have, well, possibly moving elsewhere. Wouldn't have been against moving abroad. Uh, maybe going to Bayern Munich, because we know they've been eclipsed a bit in the Bundesliga. Obviously, Leverkusen confirmed as champions on Sunday afternoon in real life. Congratulations to them. And in the save, they've won more Bundesliga titles than Bayern Munich as well. That was definitely my next step, going to Bayern Munich to try and put them back on top spot. But... 
I think to win the league in the European double, to do it through Mackenzie, the Wonder Kid Academy grad, scoring just his third pro goal as the dagger, taking out Real Madrid, who knocked us out last season. What a way to end. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. So, uh, with that being the case then, um, let's, let's wrap the save up today. We we're going to wrap the season up anyway, but now we might as well wrap the save up. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at the uh, other competitions uh, within England and around the world as well. You know, I never showed a Super Cup, by the way. I, I barely ever show it. Wolfsburg won it this year. But I, I, barely, I don't know why I barely ever show it. But anyway, Wolfsburg beat Chelsea in the Super Cup. Last year won the Europa League. Chelsea win the Champions League. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start with the Carabao Cup. As we know, uh, Man City won that to at least get a major honour after we pit them uh, to Premier League title this year. As we saw earlier, the FA Cup, we were humiliated by Spurs and they went on to win it and finally finally end their trophy drought, beating Newcastle in the final. And I guess technically there was a treble, because we won the Community Shield at the start of the season. <laughs> Imagine trying to claim that as a treble. Oh, by the way, this is fascinating though. I saw this before I started the episode. Conference League winner this year. Well, when you talk about fairy tales, Boa Vista going all the way to win the Conference League. Optimo beating Manchester United in the final 3-2. I mean, to be fair, Boa Vista in the 90s were a regular European side, but obviously quite a while since then. Uh, as for the Europa League, though, uh, in the end, it was a Newcastle United PSG final. And in the end, PSG ran out winners by two goals to nil. And of course, for the Champions League, a full look at our path and knockout stage as well. Oh, it, you know, it really is shades of 2005. Like, do you remember Liverpool needed to qualify on the final group game? And then they won the final, obviously, the, the classic 3-3 comeback on penalties. We were the same. We were basically out heading into the final group game, only for Bayern to do us a massive favour and uh, beat Valencia. And after we beat Slavia Prague, we managed to make it through on the head-to-head. -head. But in the end, came through Inter. Leverkusen, Manchester City, and then Real Madrid. What an incredibly tough way to do it, but we did it by the skin of our teeth through group qualification and big KO blows in the knockout stage as well. So we'll look at the other leagues around the world, starting with the English football leagues. Uh, Leicester City and Norwich automatically promoted this year with Fulham, the Blades, Middlesbrough, and Coventry City uh, going into the championship, uh, going into the playoffs, sorry, in this year's championship. Uh, as for League One, uh, this year you see Plymouth and Reading promoted automatically. The players will be Barnsley, Sheffield Wednesday, we're going to play and Rotherham United in English football's third tier and as for the fourth tier and the final full-time professional league although of course not the full-on national league will be as well uh, Bradford City, Gillingham and Tramley rose up automatically and the playoffs Wickham Wanderers, Bristol Rose, Walsall and Cole Chester United in the English fourth tier. PSG last year finished in third, no such problems this year, and only winning the Europa League, but also back on top in uh, Ligue 1, uh, nine clear in Marseille to win the French top tier. Well, I did say I was considering pivoting to Bayern Munich if we didn't win the Champions League and continuing the save. In the end, well, they don't need my help. You have six clear at Dortmund to recapture the Bundesliga, Le uh, Leipzig in third, sorry, and uh, Bayer Leverkusen in fourth. Uh, as for the Serie A, or are we here? The Serie A, which I, I always find is one of the most interesting leagues to look at. This year was Milan on top by three points. Of Juve in second, Lazio third, Napoli fourth. It's just because like the, the top six, and really you could say the top seven, top eight, a, a diff ev every single year, Every single year, it's different. It's brilliant. There's so much parity. And as for the Eredivisie this year in the Dutch league, Ajax back on top of Dutch football. One clear FC Twente with AZ Altmaier in third and PSG dropping the fifth with Feyenoord in fourth in this year's Dutch top tier. Porto, champions of the League of Portugal, sporting in second and Benfica in third. Boa Vista might have won the Conference League, but that's how they qualify for next year's Europa League, despite an eighth place finish in the League of Portugal. That's a, that's a crazy Cinderella story for them now. And as for the Scottish Premier Premiership, uh, as I always say, this is the end of the first phase, then there's a second phase, but you, you, you can never find out what it is. You just got to assume that the team are on top, won the championship, and in this year's case, uh, it was Celtic finishing one clear, their old firm rivals, Rangers. Might have finished runners up in the Champions League, but did win La Liga, as we alluded to earlier. Uh, 11 clear of Barca as they, I wouldn't say dominated La Liga, but definitely ran out comfortable winners uh, in Spanish top tier. That's Real Madrid for you. The Turkish Super League was Galatasaray, finishing 10 clear of Bajak Shahir with Travis on support in third. Really low finish for Fenerbahce this year, finishing uh, all the way down in second place in the Turkish top tier. And as we always end with the MLS, this has kind of just got going here. And I teased it last season as Montreal, the currently top right now, repping Canada. I don't know where Toronto are, though. Or Vancouver, ninth Vancouver. Where's Toronto? Toronto are off to a poor season. I did tease it. I am considering doing an... Edit. I'll write down the bottom. I am considering doing an MLS career mode for the first time ever this year. Keep, keep your eyes peeled. And, and and keep yourself keep 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 
yeah, keep your eyes peeled. I'm, I'm considering doing an MLS career mode this year. Never done one before, but uh, we're definitely, certainly considering it this year. I I'd love to give it a go for the first time ever, man. And so for the finale of the entire save, we'll take one final look at the team as always. And I have to say, our, our job's done with Liverpool now. Listen, I would have loved to have won the treble. I would have loved to have done it, but... Okay, fair enough. We we got humiliated by Spurs in the FA Cup. So anyway, I can live with it. I can live with it. Because we won the FA Cup last year. We've won the Premier League three times in a row. Granted, I don't bow out with a Carabao Cup. But I think I can live with that. Um, yeah, it, it's an amazing team. We've built an incredible, incredible team. If we were to continue with the Liverpool side, really, it's just about adding to it. You know, it's already probably the best team in the world or, or at least up there i'd say maybe third behind real Madrid and man city yeah I, I'd, I'd say i'd say probably third but i mean we got clark we got gakpo we got kirkes and we got trent all in the 90s allison only just dropped out of the 90s due to age but ben would probably get there in a year or two i feel quite confident that harvey will probably get there at some point as well um and, and Colwood as well, probably in the next season. This is an incredible team. You know, incredible, incredible team. We, we've built it so well. And I, I would say the job is finished. The job is finished. But not just with the team, but with the save as a whole. It's been absolutely class. And I've, I've loved it to pieces, man. Alisson, clean sheet in the Champions League final uh, in order to, uh, to to bow with a league and European double. You love to see that. That's probably the only thing we'd do, actually. If we were to continue next season, that's probably the only thing we'd do. Sell Alisson... Because well, he's out conscious, isn't he, in a month? Or maybe we just let him go on a free, despite being 88 overall, and just bring in a new starting goalkeeper. That's probably it. I'll probably bring in someone like Donnarumma or Mike, and then that will do me. <laughs> that's, that's the Liverpool team done, you know. But uh, Kirk is one of the OGs, man. We inherited with... In fact, he's the only OG. Technically, the only OG of the save. Milos Kirk is inherited with the Cherries. We turn him into an elite, well, a world-class fullback at Bournemouth and then an elite one with Liverpool. Coming in for this season, growing a rating to 90 overall. 17 clean sheets. Uh, sorry, last season. Sorry, last season he came. 17 clean sheets in 32 games. What an absolute... No, it was this season. Start of this season. Sorry. Get my seasons modelled up here. But what an elite fullback he is, man. Now 90 overall. Uh, Jarrell Haytel, he converted him to left back in the end because we felt as though Kwanzaa had kind of surpassed him in CB. And like I said, despite the fact he's two ratings lower, he had done. I much preferred uh, Kwanzaa to Hato, but still a solid squad left back and a backup left back for uh, Milos Kerkes. Uh, Ibrahim Kornate also had a bug in the first season with Liverpool, so we, we couldn't use him, which was so, so frustrating, but thankfully decided to stay despite being annoyed at the lack of game time. There's nothing I can do about it, but once the bug cleared, he became one of our starting series alongside Colwell, who was our best. Whether it was Kwanzaa or Kornate starting, Colwell was always starting. 52 league games. I think he played more games than anyone else as an outfield player other than Cody Gakpo. Upper rating to 89 overall and like I said he's got holds on his attributes but next season I'm very confident he would hit 90 overall and join the 90 club what a sign he was from Brentford back in season 3 our first year at Liverpool for the rebuild we said come back to the Premier League with us here at Liverpool yeah, what a sign and that was not about it. But Kwanzaa, I have to, I'm so pleased with this guy. Man. I brought this guy back as a Liverpool Academy grad for the rebuild. What a player. What a player. Only up one rating this year to 83 overall. But like I said, man, this is why you shouldn't, uh, you know, consider the overall rating to be the most important factor as to whether you should buy or continue using players. I preferred him to Kanate. Kanate's five ratings higher, but I preferred Kwanzaa. Clean sheet in the Champions League final. Dude, dude, was, dude was sublime, man. Absolutely loved him. Uh, we'll never develop Rojas fully. I'm not sure how much better he was going to get anyway, but upper rating to 82 overall and a nice score player for us there. Connor Bradley brought him back this year. He grew two ratings to 85 overall in any other team in the Premier League is probably a starter, but for Liverpool, of course, had to settle for a back at roll because of the kid, Ben McKenzie, up four rings this year to 87 overall. And it's so funny because when we were with Bournemouth, if you remember, we had another fullback called Lee Wynn, the Welsh lad who had 92, 94 potential. And it was always like, you know, when are we going to get Wynn in the team? How good can the guy become? And in the end, this guy was just waiting in the wings like, listen, you, you won't see me coming. But I'm coming, and I'm going to take over as the, 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 the main academy grad from Bournemouth as a star. And he certainly was. Still getting better and better and better, and I have no doubt in my mind. Play, play, play another season, he'll be at 90 overall. He's only 20 years old, and what a way for the season to end. And the save to end of him scoring a dagger in the Champions League final. But what a player, though. What a signing from, from Bournemouth. I said in season one, listen, I know you just signed your first pro contract with Bournemouth, but... Yeah, that was last season. I gave it to you. 
And I always had a plan to bring you with me to Liverpool. What a player. What a player, man. And I, again, when you ever see me have uh, a Shira Vela just the two games here, he was our Ben Davies of the uh, of the Liverpool stint. When do you ever see me have a wonder kid out of the academy at fullback? <laughs> Not very often. So I love how this save had something unique in it. But uh, Boobs, great signing from Aston Villa in the first year here at Anfield as well. As I always say, there's always one player that never gets the credit. That's Boobacar Camera. His stats, like I say, should be higher. And it's just because, again, he doesn't get goals or assists. Only one goal and two assists in 46 games. He's a defensive player, though. We had the best defensive record in the league for three years running. Big reason why? Boobacar Camera. Uh, Archie Gray, in the end, didn't really develop him much just for the squad, really, but nice to have him in the squad. Uh, Stefan, of course, uh, as you'll see, grew two ratings this year and he's still getting better as well and possibly the long-term success for Boobacar Camera. Three ratings lower, yes, but five years younger. And if we were to continue, I think Stefan would eventually take his place in about two or three years. Uh, Trent, 19 assists in 49 games and, uh, and uh, 13 and 33, sorry. Absolutely amazing creativity, as we know. We turned him into an official CM from right back. Whilst we did play him there on occasion, I said it when we signed him, man. I don't want to stump McKenzie's growth, and I want to get Trent further forward. Why? His creativity is unbelievable. Playing through the middle, he had some fantastic assists throughout the save. Trent Alexander-Arnold coming back from Real Madrid. In the end, I think it was the right call for him. Liverpool legend, and that 66 is certainly going to be retired at some point. Eberet Gize, his stats don't seem great, but the goals and the assists he got seem to always come into big games. We turned him from a winger to an attacking mid to a CM. The transition was gradual. We got there in the end. Eberet Gize might have gone down due to the injury to 85 overall, but he was a great signing in the first season as well from a relegated Crystal Palace. Uh, Curtis Jones, though, man, what a player. He scored some big goals throughout the course of the save, and none bigger than that first in the Champions League finals to set us on our way. Brought him back. I said when you come back here, you'll be a starter in this team. Not coming off the bench like before. I stuck true to my word. He didn't let me down. Seven goals and 13 assists in 46 games, averaging a 7.33. The lad from Tox Steph. What a ball. Eunice Musa obviously scored the goal on the final day of the Premier League back in our first year at Liverpool that won us the title. He'll always go down as a Liverpool icon because of that and a great versatile squad player. I always say you need a player like this in your team that can play anywhere. Eunice Musa filled in literally anywhere for me and did a great job every time he was called upon. Bobby Clark grew two ratings, but again, like Shira Vela and Cade Gordon, he was really just here to help fill the homegrown quota and uh, be a squad player for us and only play restricted minutes off the bench, really. What you garbage time minutes, if you will. Uh, Harvey Elliott, as you'll see, grew a rating since coming back from PSG. Yeah, he, he, he would continue to get better and better, and I do think there's a chance he could possibly hit 90. If he grew a, grew a rating every season, he would, getting to 30 uh, before he starts to possibly show signs of decline. But when we brought him in, we trained him to be a CB initially, and like I said, it was mainly because his defensive stats were so poor, as was his strength as well. I know I've had some raised eyebrows on that. But lest we forget, the second goal in the Champions League semi-final against Man City when he completed the turnaround, who got it? Harvey Elliott. How did he do it? He headed it in. Yeah, I'm not going to say I, 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 I called that. It was not part of the plan, but it's great how it works out. But yeah, no, Harvey Elliott, man. It wasn't, wasn't great for me in his first year. But again, it's mainly because I split the game time between he and Luis Diaz and... You know, to be fair, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't quite have the lightning pace that Diaz does. And that's what we like from our wingers. And speaking of Luis, 32 years old, could have left during the rebuild season, but stayed with us. And that's why we love Luis Diaz. He'll always be loved at Anfield, mate. He's been here for all the years now in the save. 10 goals and 9 assists in 28 Premier League games and 13 and 12 in total, averaging over 7. Unfortunately, like Alisson, like Salah last year, he's starting to show signs of decline. And that's why for next season... I would hope he would decide to retire come the, uh, come the start of next season for next year if we were to continue and give him one last dance like we did with Mo Salah. But um, yeah, Luis Diaz, what a legend for being here since we arrived and staying with us as well. But Jack Clark brought him in the start of last season as the superstar. He was better last year than he was this year, I'll be honest here, despite the injury he got last year breaking that toe. He still grew a rating to 91 overall. 
and we look at his stats, 17 goals and 16 assists in 51. Okay, it's not it's not amazing, but it's still pretty solid from Jack Eye. And of course, don't forget, a lot of the assists came through Trent through the middle and also Cody Gakpo. You know, we run the offense through the spearhead of the team. So Clark and Diaz, they're going to get a few goals and assists, but they're never going to have the same sort of record that Cody Gakpo, for example. Uh, Kay Gordon, again, just brought him back really for the squad. Ben Doak stayed here just as part of the squad. But there is the back-to-back -back Ballon d'Or winner. First time I've had a back-to-back -back Ballon d'Or winner in FC24. And you know when he won it last season? I was like... That's a bit bizarre. Don't think he deserves that. This season, he definitely did. Yeah, up to 92 overall. And maybe last year was a premature awarding of the Ballon d'Or. This year, definitely not. Golden Boot winner with 31 in 36. Also got 12 assists as well. And 6 goals and an assist in 11 Champions League games as well. 43 goals and 15 assists in 52 games. Last year, I think the Ballon d'Or was a little bit fortunate. This year, absolutely deserved it. Possibly could have got into 40 this year. Had to continue his good form around March, April time. But in the end... Doesn't matter to me too much. Still haven't got another player joining the 40 club yet. It could have been Cody this year. It wasn't, but I think we're satisfied with Champions League and Premier League double, as well as Cody winning the back-to-back -back Ballon d'Or. He's all right with that. And as for Felix, always scored against me in this year's FC. Thankfully, with Liverpool, he didn't have the chance to. Kept him as my backup striker. And to be fair, to be fair, didn't get me many goals in three years. He got me four this year, but the one goal I always remember, the goal in the FA Cup semi-final last year to send us through to the final, where we ended up winning it as well. Yep, that's the only goal that mattered to me. And as I'm just going to show you a few teams in world football, and you can take a look at the star rating, I think we are indeed now officially, technically the highest rated team in world football, I think. I think I might be wrong. Correct if I'm wrong. My maths is often wrong. But uh, even to a few teams for you there. As uh, you'll see, I think, again, we are now technically the highest rated team in world football. So a perfect way to end, not just the season, but to save as well. By confirming that by winning the league and Champions League double. So the final thing we'll do is to look at the My Career section. Uh, as you'll see, in the first season with Bournemouth, uh, we, had, we had a solid first year. I, I, I would have said no progress in the Cups, but a top 10 finish was nice to see. Jack Clark, what an investment. And that proved to be for £12 million. Uh, second season where he took the step up, winning ball for their first major honour in world football, or club history, I should say. Well, both are applicable. Uh, winning the FA Cup, which was lovely, absolutely lovely to see, uh, finishing in the top six for the first time in club history as well. And in the third year, that was fantastic. Yeah, heading into the third year with Bournemouth, went into the Europa League final, unfortunately did end up losing that, but still won the FA Cup. So back-to-back -back FA Cups with Bournemouth in the end. And uh, despite an eighth place finish, and taking a step back by winning the FA Cup, we still qualify for a European competition. But then we left to Liverpool. Obviously, ignore that one. Then we left to Liverpool. And of course, our first year with Liverpool, I said it was the rebuild era. It was the rebuild season where we were starting to gut the team out and bring in some uh, new players for the core if you will. Final four of both the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. And if you remember, we lost both of those on penalties. But the redeeming quality was the Premier League ties. We yep, won the championship, won the Premier League for Liverpool for the first time uh, since 2020. Uh, and then the following year, we then took the next step. First, it was a league title. Then it was a league and FA Cup double and the Community Shield, if you want, as well. And whilst we were knocked out in the Champions League quarterfinals by Real Madrid, we knew we were getting better and better. We were knew we were progressing and getting much, much stronger as a team and finally getting back to being one of the biggest clubs, not just in England, but also in the world as well. And in our third and final year, we proved that. Okay, these haven't been allocated yet, so not officially ended the season, but... Winning the Community Shield back to back, but also winning the Premier League third year in a row. And whilst it wasn't a dream treble by not retaining our FA Cup, being humbled by Spurs in the semis, I'm okay bowing out with that Champions League. Liverpool seventh in history in the cabinet by getting our demons, uh, avenging our demons and getting our revenge on Real Madrid to win the Champions League as well. So in the end, it was three league titles for Doxy Boy with Liverpool in a row. The three P, three FA Cups as well. Two with Bournemouth and one with Liverpool. And of course, the Champions League as well. A couple of community shields thrown into. And I have to say, what a fantastic save this has been. Guys, we're going to leave it there. I I just want to say a massive thank you from me to you for the support on the save and the feedback as well. It's been absolutely class, man. And, and genuinely, 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 
it is hard to leave this save because I've absolutely loved it, but it's a great natural conclusion to it, and I just can't say thank you for all the support and love, man. It's been class, it's been one of my favourite saves in recent years, and my second favourite save of FC, going back to Luton Town career mode. I love you guys so much, thank you very much, and what comes next is a brand new career mode, which will be starting tomorrow afternoon. Really looking forward to it, hopefully it's even half as good as this one, which has been absolutely class and I've loved so much. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all. Thank you for all the support on this save. And I'll see you for a brand new career mode starting tomorrow afternoon.